Okay, so what was the most interesting way somebody approached you? Um, uh, do, do I mention the cocaine? Uh, no. <laughs> uh, I'm joking. Uh, I have a feeling that you're not joking. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I think being honest, honest, to be honest with you, do you know what the thing about journalists is? We love to think that we discovered something, okay? So if you make the journalist feel like they found it, like they uncovered this gold, then uh, we don't have to actually do that. We have to, I mean, make, make something amazing, make a great product, make a great startup. Then we start to go, oh, hello, oh, this is great, this is great. This is... It's better than sex, basically, to be a <laughs> Uh, uh, don't tell my wife. Um, <laughs> but it is. She might, she might actually be here. It's so. Right? It's She's already here. Yeah. She Jane. Here. Jane, are you here? Jane, are you here? Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's because when you when you write when you write a story that's unique and you were the only person to find that, and it's something it's something really cool. Everyone's gonna love. That's kind of really exciting. That's that's why journalists become journalists. Because we get paid shit money, <laughs> we just like we just like what we do. We're crazy people, so um, that's that's the kind of that's when you get the buzz. Okay, so like how long? Um, and I have to tell you, I've, we've been friends for a while, right? And sometimes I'm bugging Mike and I'm attacking him all possible way, like emails, Skype, G talk, G talk, <laughs> G like Mike, 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 I'm like Mike, are you there? Are you there? So I'm really persistent in like trying to reach him if I need to. Like, so how long does it take to reach you usually? Because I, I feel people get easily discouraged. You know, one mail, second mail, and they're like, okay, it's done. And you still have to send like five other mails in and and just be persistent, right? I, uh, I think uh, a lot of the time actually it helps to um, know somebody who knows like a writer like me. Um, because then it's a little bit like a VC, because VCs rarely take direct pitches. The the startup can look so great when you hang it onto a bit. It, the startups come coming through trusted. Like if Ella if Ella told me about an awesome startup in Krakow, I would take notice because I know Ella and I've known Ella for a while, and she's a trusted filter. So in a way, sometimes contacting the journalist is. Um, through trusted people who know them is a bit better. That's why you tend to, that's why PR as a business tends to work because for somebody to do something real, they have to stump up all this money and the, they tell them the PRs, the PRs generally know the journalists. So you're sort of paying for that instead of just knowing somebody. It's just more useful to know somebody. But um, the, uh, what was the question again? Uh, <laughs> Oh yeah, how, how persistent. So yeah, people will email me, at me on Twitter, uh, try and you know te try and find my phone number, try and text me, blah blah blah. Uh, but that that's great. But you you're gonna have to be you know it's gonna have to, to look click on it. It's gonna be useful. Oh you know obviously check it out a lot of the time. But if, it has to be pretty good. Um, so it's fine. To, I mean, please just don't do all of that stuff. Not everything, you know. Sometimes it gets a bit annoying because if you can do it, I think it's about staging things. So if you if you're trying to contact somebody from every angle and you do it persistently for like days on end, that just starts to get annoying. So come back maybe a couple of days later. Did you get the email? Blah blah. blah. A couple of, just keep it a couple of days, a couple of days, and it'll, it'll it'll work itself out. Okay. So another question. How early do you have to know uh, before an important release? And I want to share a story that, a mistake that we made. We were doing this April Fool's instant company handbook. If you know us, you might have followed that. But, and we were really excited about it and we thought, okay, that's going to be great news and a cool thing and it's like absolutely just a viral campaign we're, we're hoping to do. But, um, it, we, and we sent the news about it to all the media, I think on April or April school or maybe one day before. And the, the, you know, the morning we woke up, there was already a story on TechCrunch about the coolest April schools 
uh, releases like Google and all the big guys did, and that must have been ready to yeah. be published. For People saying this I, April Fool's on April Fool's Day yeah. is too late. But we've already written most of the stuff by that stage anyway, and you, and then that's when everyone does their April Fool press release. Like it's it's gonna be have to be like I said. Do you feel lucky, punk? You know, it has to gonna be better than all the other stuff you've already got in the pipeline. So now a question like. I'm sure if you want to ask about something PR related and tech media related, you can also talk to Mike later. But maybe you can use that opportunity and ask Mike about uh, the uh, European startup ecosystem. So how, wh where do you have to be? You mentioned events, right? You mentioned you have to be at different events. If you're, you know, if you're targeting only Polish market, then you might as well attend just Polish events. But where do you have to be? It's London, it's it's Berlin, it's Dublin. What do you, what do you think? Um, I think that London remains very much, it's, it's not really about London and the UK being awesome. It's just about, if you think about a saloon bar in the old wild west, so cowboys come in from the prairies and they hook up their their horse to the saloon bar and go in and start playing poker. And that's kind of like what London is. It's a big gate uh, crossing post where lots of people coming in and out all the time. Uh, so that's use useful to know. Um, I mean, there's a lot going on. In, there is quite a lot going on in Berlin right now. For some reason, something start going going a bit crazy there. Not so much in Paris. Uh, it's doing okay there. Um, but you. London is good, but of course, you know, just being able to do the valley as well, um, flick, flick over to the valley now and again, um, and, uh, you know, try and network there. Um, but I think, yeah, going to a few events, that's why we kind of created the Tech Hub with friends, because uh, we didn't want to just have to go to expensive conferences all the time, we wanted to hang out with other people who, were, who could be around. Um, but yeah, keep a track of events, because it really, because at the end of the day, face-to-face -face meetings and actually being able to look somebody in the eye beats any kind of online communication. So if you're launching, I know it's a very general question, but I know you, you will handle it. So if you're launching a startup and you're targeting global or European market, uh, how do you gain traction? Uh, that's a good question. I mean, it's, it's, going, it's going to be tricky because uh, maybe building in virality to what you're doing. Um, there's some particular startups out there at the moment who are doing lots of gamification, like Fantasy Shopper. Um, dot com, for instance, they're quite interesting about how they're gaming, gaming shopping. Um, but certainly amongst the media, um, I think you want if you've got a great product, then you're, you're going to ask to go onto the big, you know, tech blogs first, like TechCrunch, Giga on. Uh, increasingly, one of the bigger ones is the Next Web as well, and they're actually in Europe. They have European writers as well. Um, and uh, but uh, it's that's sort of, you want to do things in the English language. If you want to go global, you have to do things in the English language. And it's quite interesting actually how some quite big companies some, uh, will will just sort of send you a, uh, a information and that, that's just like a local language or something. You're like, how do I do what do I do with this? So yeah, English is just is the international language now. It's like Esperanto now for the world, isn't it? So that's it. Hi, I'm just really curious about the value of being on TechCrunch because you've got all these people who are selling to you and you must have a feeling that what's really important is that it's interesting rather than it's necessarily commercially valuable. But on the other hand, the reason people want to be on TechCrunch is because it might be valuable for them. Do you have any sense of how valuable it is to be on TechCrunch? Well, I think um, it depends on what you're doing. A lot of the time, you. If you're giving, so you remember it's about my readers, so if you're giving something to my readers, like special invite codes for something that we think is good, and it's invite codes and it's just for TechCrunch readers, then that's great. Then we'll, that might end up being something that we'll write about, like a, a new beta invite. But I think the, the biggest mistake a startup can make is thinking that a post on a big site, like GigaRom or TechCrunch or whatever, um, or, or VentureBeat or whatever, is is their launch strategy. That's wrong, right? If your launch strategy and your marketing strategy is just media media hype, then you really have to start thinking about what you're doing because that's probably a bit of a component, but it might also go completely wrong. And that happened recently to a startup I know out of London called Bonfire IM who created Instant Chat 
on Twitter. So you're on Twitter and suddenly you can start IMing your Twitter friends, not just DMing them. And we put them, they launched with Giga Arm and with TechCrunch at the same time and went totally down, completely fucked. <laughs> oh, you can't get on it. And it, it, it broke them. And now they're, they're uh, now I just start, I'm just now contemplating I should just write the story that how they launched t- totally failed. So it might backfire in your face. So you have to think about it. Because we don't, we're, we're, not, we're not that, you know, at the end of the day, we're about news and traffic and things like that. Not necessarily about making your company work. Sorry. That, that's fine. Um, two more little questions. One is, you must get people lying about wanting to talk to you so much. Is it deserving it too much? You just wish it would stop. Um, second question, what do, you, stop. Yeah, what do you want to do next after you finish doing Tech Crunch Europe? What, when I grow up? Um, no, I actually find it's, it's quite instructive when people talk to you about, not about themselves or about what their company, about, but about um, what's going on in the marketplace. So, you know, when Foursquare launched, one of the biggest hot topics in, in the marketplace was mobile location. And if you, would talk, if you talk intelligently about that, uh, especially to the media, they start to think, hey, this person really knows what they're talking about. And they're not just pitching their company, they actually, they're thoughtful. And that's useful to know. Uh, and it's about having a conversation, not just about selling all the time. You know, get the selling over with, pitch like a human, get the selling over with, don't pitch at the urinal in the toilet, and, uh, and then just, have fun. Any more questions, guys? Okay, we have another one. Do you want to come over? You want to sh- what, 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 is it? what is it? So, so the question is, uh, sometimes someone creates a great technology that's not a startup, okay? Yeah, sure. I mean, if you've... Uh, but, but the thing is, I mean, that's maybe for a different kind of a title. Remember, you have to target the title that who's... You know, so you want to go after... Uh, like put something on Hacker News or that something that's awesome for hackers and for geeks and for, for CTOs, uh, but there's not necessarily a startup or a product, but it might be something that's game-changing, a new kind of game-changing technology that might change how Facebook operates or... Because the thing is, if that affects something else in the marketplace, yeah, then, then we're interested, right? And so one final thought, if, if somebody has a question, just get ready after I finish, because that's going to be a final a possibility. So we were talking about it yesterday, like how European, Eastern European, to be precise, startups are perceived in the US, and whenever we are approaching, you know, even people from London and, and from New York, and how, how do you think we are perceived and... Because practically, I, the, the men, okay, let's, I will make it easier for you. How we're being perceived is like, no, nobody really gives a damn. If you're approaching uh, US investors or UK investors, the, the second you're, you're going to tell them you're moving to the valley, you're moving to London or whatever, they're start listening. They're start, start listening. They, they wouldn't give a damn about somebody who's, who's staying here. So, I, I guess, uh, no? I would caveat that. I would say, if you're doing a startup here in, in uh, Krakow or in Warsaw or somewhere else in, in Poland, for instance, uh, and and say you go to London, you meet a VC or an angel or, or hang out with some people there. Um, they won't mind that you're not moving necessarily um, because you're only an hour, you know, only a couple of hours away on a flight. It's not that, I mean, flights are like buses in Europe, aren't they? Um, but, uh, I mean, if you want to do a startup that's kind of headquartered in London and maybe you want to put in a UK limited company, keep your team in Poland, and do sales and marketing in London and network and investments and things like that. I think it's, it is, the valley is very much its own echo chamber though. And if you can, you can walk up to a valley person, you know, a startup person in tech, Silicon Valley or in San Francisco and, and say, you know, we're this great startup from Krakow. They'll go, crack? Did you say crack? <laughs> they won't really know, so A, A, they won't, won't get it. And B, they won't care that you're from where you are. Um, uh, when I was in TechCrunch Europe a few years ago, we thought, let's, let's, let's make it really European. And every time we wrote a story, we'd put Berlin, dot, dot, dot. In Berlin today, you know, and in Warsaw today, Warsaw. And then I suddenly realised, 
that was really bad for the startups because people would go, it's in Warsaw, next. You know, um, and it's much better to talk about the product and the startup, not where they're from. And because technology is a global industry now, you can go global from anywhere. The guys who did the cut the rope app um, on the iPhone, which is just insanely downloaded, it's kind of like a competitor to Andrew, Angry Birds, two guys from Moscow. You know, nobody cares where you're from, it's about what you create. So, so the golden lining, we, we also uh, talked about it, like all of us yesterday, about the fact that European startups are, happen to be good at some specific, um, in some specific area, so like cultural stuff, like, so if we're trying to stay authentic and we're trying to do what we're, what we can do best, we can also succeed on a global scale. So what, what do you think of it? Um, well, I think that one of the themes that's emerging out of European startups, we're very good at enterprise, we're very good at business startups, uh, uh, business-led startups like uh, Future Simple, for instance. Um, and we're very good at also creating, you know, drawing out of culture. So, for instance, so, uh, I think we're going to hear from a company here called, called My Guidey, and My Guidey is about, like, discovering local places. And this is all about culture. And we are, you know, Europeans are interested in culture. We love fat, uh, history. And in London, in Silicon Roundabout, in East London, where Tech Hub is, we've got all these fashion startups, fashion, art, music, and we're actually leveraging our heritage as, you know, Europeans to create companies. And it's not something that the uh, startups coming out of America necessarily think about because their, their history is only a couple of hundred years old. Uh, but one thing I do want to say, and this is a parting shot for you guys, and we can finish now, which is this. You, everybody needs to start thinking about creating platforms, big platforms. Think big. Because what do we want to end up with in the future? Do we want to end up with four computers running the world? Apple, Facebook, Google, Amazon, right? Four computers, effectively. So what we want is Europeans creating the platforms of the future, taking over the world. Okay? Okay, thank you. So, thank you. Thank you. See you later.